So according to our council bylaw, <clears throat> believe it or not, uh, each councillor is allowed to speak up to 15 minutes on this matter. Um, so I'm going to ask councillors to be mindful without cutting themselves uh, short from making the comments that they want to make, to just be mindful of, of the time and to try to be as concise as possible. So Mr. Coates, if you could present the bylaw for our consideration, please. Uh, for council's consideration is, <clears throat> excuse me, third reading to zoning amendment bylaw number 19-065. Thank you. I'll move the bylaw. Is there a seconder? Thank you. Seconded by Councillor Potts. I appreciate that. So I move this because the mover gets to speak first uh, and also potentially last if necessary. And uh, as with my instructions to Council, I'm going to be as concise as possible. Um, this is a very important decision facing Council and the public this evening. Um, and I think in some ways it's one of the most important decisions we've made in this term. Uh, another one was the decision we made and somebody asked, do we approve rentals in Fairfield? Um, yes, we approved a new rental building at the Fairfield United Church and that took just as long as this application has. It took us uh, two and a half years to approve 15 units of rental housing. And here we are again after two and a half years approving hopefully this evening 20 units of uh, townhouses. And uh, it shouldn't take this long to to build housing in the city so I think the decision that we're facing this evening uh, the question that I'm asking myself is what kind of city does Victoria want to be do we want to be a city that looks back do we want to be a city that looks around or do we want to be a city that looks forward and my hope, and I actually have a lot of confidence in this council, that we are a council that wants to look forward and that wants to build a city for the future. Uh, change is really difficult. It's, it's very difficult for us, and I can tell you that being on the end of lots of hate mail about bike lanes for the last four years, change is, change is not easy. It's not easy. But what's more difficult is not changing. That's more difficult because if we don't change, the world is going to change around us. And so while we've heard comments this evening and on other nights about people not liking 20 story buildings downtown or 20 units of townhouses in Gonzales, our city is growing and our city is going to continue to grow. Our businesses are going to continue to grow. The restaurants that we continue to, that we like to eat at are going to continue to need employees. We all need doctors. There's a doctor shortage. The doctors are going to need to move here and they're going to need housing. So as somebody said this evening very eloquently, we need more housing, we need more housing, and we need more housing. And one of the things that I believe is that everyone deserves a good home, that everyone deserves a good job, and that everyone deserves a sustainable community. And some of the statistics presented at the beginning of the meeting for me were very compelling. It is not sustainable to add 85 net new people to one neighborhood in a 45 year period. That, that is not sustainable. It's also not sustainable that 9% of the city's land mass only has 0.8% of the city's townhouses. That's not sustainable. And I know that this council wants to build a sustainable city, and I know that that's what our residents want as well. We've heard lots of comments this evening about the reality of climate change, and the reality of climate change is a, real, a reality, and we have, as one resident pointed out, declared a climate emergency. And again, as was pointed out, I think it was in the presentation by the applicant, but he quoted one of our colleagues in the city of Vancouver, that a solution to the climate crisis is also a solution to the housing crisis. When we build this kind of housing where people live where they already need to be, where they can walk to thrifties, where they can bike downtown, where they can take their kids to childcare, we're reducing greenhouse gas emissions just by the way that we're building the city. And so I think that the fellow who said, what have you done so far for climate change after declaring this emergency, he's gone home now, but what we've done and what we'll do again hopefully tonight is approve housing that densifies neighborhoods where people want to live. So our city is changing, our neighborhoods are changing, the world is changing, and that is a fact. And it's very difficult to sit up here and to have half of the people say they don't want this building and another half of the people to say they do want this building. And our job is to look around and to listen. And our 
bigger job and our most difficult job is to look towards the future and to say what kind of city do we want to be. I'll just close by, by sharing a couple of, I guess, more uh, uh, emotional or, or um, heartfelt uh, things that I, that I heard tonight that I think is, are worth reflecting on in terms of what kind of city that we want to be. Uh, there was one person, and I think he's also gone home tonight, who said um, kind of in a negative way, well, what, do we want Hollywood Park to be one big communal backyard? Absolutely, yes, we do. That's what I want for all of our green spaces. I want all of our green spaces to be filled up with people from you know, seniors to young kids to families. That's what the commons is for. And we've lost that. So I want that back. And I think that this development contributes to it. And I think the, uh, the woman who did make this comment, which I'm about to close on, said that her son won't be home for Sunday dinner anytime soon. And I want a city where kids can come home for Sunday dinner. And so that's why I'm supporting this application this evening, and I hope that Council will as well. Councillor Potts.